For lesson 3.1, we're going to look at the Reactive Streams API. This might seem like a little bit of a detour from the Java 9 functionality we've looked at so far. We spent quite a lot of time looking at Project Jigsaw and the Java platform module system, uh, not surprisingly, because that's a very large chunk of Java 9. What's not so well known is the fact that the Reactive Streams API is now part of Java the language. So I want to take a bit of a time to take a look at what the Reactive Streams API is and, um, and how uh, how you use it in Java 9. So what is the Reactive Streams API? There's been a lot of noise around reactive programming for the last few years or so. Um, you'll hear about reactive systems, reactive programming, reactive streams. Uh, it's an overloaded word that gets used an awful lot. And so it's been used often enough now that there is a standard way for reactive systems to talk to each other. This is in terms of reactive programming. Reactive systems as a whole is a, is a, wider, uh, a wider concern. But in terms of reactive programming, there is in the Java world a consistent standard API for different reactive programming libraries to talk to each other. And, and this is what it looks like. So it's been defined as, as being in the package org.reactivestreams. It's made up of four very simple interfaces. You have a publisher and a subscriber. You have a processor, which combines both publisher and subscriber. And you have a subscription, which is how um, subscribers can manage their subscriptions. So it's a very simple thing. There's not a lot to it. It's a 1.0. And there are plenty of implementations of this. A lot of the reactive programming uh, implementations that you'll have heard of already talk in terms of these interfaces. So for example, Rx Java version 2 onwards, Akka Streams, the MongoDB reactive Java driver, um, uh, Reactor, Vertex. These are all um, implementations of this API. The great thing about this is that having standardized upon an API, you can have different implementations of, re of reactive programming paradigms um, talking to each other over the same API. So not only can you use reactive programming libraries to talk to each other across individual systems or across individual processes, you can even have them talking within processes because they're using the same API to talk to each other. This consistency is, is a really good thing for, for the ecosystem. And this has become so standard that Java the language is actually adopting this in Java 9. So Java 9 is going to get uh, the Reactive Streams API built into it. And this is great. This is an embracing of the reactive programming uh, style. And this is a good way of doing asynchronous programming. And with the adoption of it inside Java 9, I think this means that we're going to be doing these sorts of things in a very similar way through this Reactive Streams API. Java 9 has adopted the Reactive Streams API as a standard and built it into the language. What does this mean from the point of view of Java 9 and for developers using Java 9? Java 9 has introduced the idea of the Flow API. It's under java.util.concurrent, um, and we have a Flow class which has a processor, a publisher, a subscriber, and a subscription. This should look very familiar. This looks pretty much identical to the Reactive Streams API that we just looked at. There are some differences, though, which are going to be important to understand. On the left, you see the Java 9 Flow API, and on the right, you see the Reactive Streams API. They are the same interfaces, and they do have the same methods, but they're in a different package, and it's a slightly different structure in terms of, in Java 9, the interfaces are part of the Flow class. So when you're actually talking in terms of processes uh, between the two, they're not actually the same implementation. That makes things a little bit interesting in terms of the fact that the implementations, the JVM implementations right now, use the Reactive Streams API. And of course, very few, if any, of the JVM implementations are going to be running on Java 9 just yet. So everything's going to be talking in terms of the org.reactivestreams API. And the Flow API is not yet used by the implementations of the Reactive Streams API. However, over time, I expect to see that if you're using Java 9, you'll be able to use the Java 9 Flow API to talk between your various reactive programming libraries. Now, when we go into more details of using the Reactive Streams API in Java 9, you'll be able to see what, um, what we can do about the slight mismatch between the Reactive Streams API and the Java 9 Flow API. 